Hey, I'm Adam. How's it going? Great. Uh, we're going to run today uh, digital oscillators from the Electribe 2, but you can use any digital synth in the same way, uh, out into a Behringer Odyssey to uh, get some tones that the Odyssey can't do on its own or to use in conjunction with the analog sounds of the Odyssey. It's pretty cool. You get to use the filter and the envelopes of the Odyssey and get that nice um, warm analog sound. Warm. Uh, warm is the only way that people say it. It's whatever. But uh, get to use the analog characteristics on digital oscillators from something else. Wow, all kinds of stuff going up on there I didn't expect. How I thought to do this was I was lusting after the Behringer Wasp, honestly. And I, after thinking about it, I, I pretty much realized it's just a simplistic analog synth with digital oscillators. And the digital oscillators don't do that much that's interesting. So I just couldn't make myself get it. So then I thought, well, what can I do to kind of make a more interesting one? I mean, I know the Wasp has some thing of its own filter, but the Odyssey has three different filters. And um, I have this Electribe 2 here. And I'm going to run it through the Odyssey and um, use the controls of the Odyssey, its envelopes, its filters, on oscillator tones from the Electribe 2. And we'll explore some different oscillators to give you a, a feel for what different uh, digital oscillators would sound like, but also give you a little bit of tips on how I'm doing it and uh, what to expect. Okay, so, you know, an analog oscillator from the Odyssey would sound like this. Let's turn down the Electribe for a second and turn up one from the Odyssey. Okay, and to get the Electribe in there, or really any digital synth, you just plug the MIDI output from the Odyssey into the Electribe, or let's say uh, Korg, Micro Korg, or something like that. And you turn the volume up of the Electribe and run the output of the synth right to the audio input of the Odyssey, and you'll have its tone right away. But there are some things to keep in mind have the filter of the digital synth off, so you're not getting any filtering from there. So right now I have it off. Okay, if you don't have a way to actually just turn it off, uh, then uh, turn its, its uh, pot all the way up. But in this synth, we can just hit the button and go through the types and change it to off. That way we can use the one from the Odyssey. We'll hear a few of the oscillators on the Electribe real quick. That one's called VPM Square. Okay, you can tell that it's very different than anything that you've heard come out of the Odyssey. Basically making our own hybrid synth here. Uh, on the Electribe 2, we have ways we can change the shape of the oscillator. So we can set a baseline of it, but we can also modulate that shape. You can do it right over here uh, where it says um, modulation. So that way we can use an envelope on the Electribe to uh, modulate the oscillator shape. We have a depth and a speed. So we're going to set our baseline level here low. We want to be on EG OS. There we go. And where it gets to get some character of the Odyssey, we'll use its filter. I like to use short envelopes to the filter uh, to the filter on the Odyssey to get that you know that bright complex color of your digital oscillator in the very beginning, sort of like a transient. Because 
if you have it longer, you could do that too. It's just going to be, well, a lot of in, a lot of buzziness. Could be interesting buzziness. We'll try a few different oscillator shapes with that. That's that's kind of an example of what I was talking about. Sounds cool, but it's awfully bright, right? But if you have that um, that bright digital oscillator complexity in the very beginning, it can be pretty interesting. Okay. Also, we can use instead of a two pole filter on the Odyssey, we can use a four pole. I tend to think that with digital oscillators on the uh, into an analog synth, you probably two pole would be better most of the time because the whole reason you're using the digital oscillators are because you want uh, some complexity and you want to be able to hear that. The four pole is steeper, so you're getting more character of the filter, but definitely less through above the cutoff point. Let's hear it though. You know, it might be nice to have some murky bass sounds or some smooth leads with just a little bit of that digital color peeking through the top. Let's hear this same sound with a four pole. Here we go. We need to compensate the volume for that a little bit. Let's hear some other oscillators. Remember, we have our oscillator uh, a shape being modulated um, by this section over here. We'll have it go a little less depth and see what happens. Okay, and we can also mix in uh, oscillator and analog oscillator from the Odyssey along with the digital to have a little more, I would say, tonal beef, you could think of it as, with some of the extra harmonics going on above it. So get some of that high stuff back in there and bring in an oscillator. Well, you have to tune them. In this case, I'm not looking at a tuner because I don't have to. I can just tune uh, the oscillator to what I'm hearing from the electrode. There we go. That's an interesting uh, concept. Let's hear some other oscillators on top of a saw wave from um, the Odyssey. Actually, let's do it with a square wave so we get a little less harmonics from, well, it's not less, just different harmonics, but maybe a little less bright. So I picked uh, this one called VPM Tri. VPM is variable phase modulation, which I think is what uh, is on the Casio CZ series. I have a CZ one in the other room. I'll do a video on it sometime. I'm just pitching it up to be a higher octave compared to the Odyssey. Let's turn down the Odyssey oscillator just for a second so we can hear better what we're getting from the electrode. All right, this does not seem to give us much extra. Well, let's raise that. So, yeah, it's just a triangle wave. So, we're not getting a lot of harmonics from it. Let's try something else. Let's try the VPM or let's try these X ones. The X ones are interesting. That definitely wants to be the octave back down. So, let's try that. And it's got portamento in it, which we need to turn off. The Lake Tribe has set portamento settings for the oscillators, which is kind of dumb. How when you switch oscillator types, you might get portamento on one, even though you turn it off on the previous one. Just how it is. And let's mix in that square from the Odyssey. Let's get a little more modulation happening. Okay, 
payloads here without the Odyssey. Try that with the four pole filter. All right, that's a good example of a sound that an Odyssey can kind of do on its own, but with a different character. You know, a digital synth, you know, uh, just sounds, I don't want to call it sounds digital because uh, it's a big category, okay? But digital synths do sound, tend to sound different, generally cleaner. Where an analog synth, sounds um, a different character. Okay, we do have some, sounds like cross modulation going on, which is what this shape is doing. It's being filtered pretty heavily from the Odyssey right now. You can see if I put the filter back up. Sounds kind of like a filter, but it's actually just changing the shape of the oscillator. Okay, I think you get the point by now. Uh, let's just hear some other oscillators and get more of a feel for what we can do, what adding a digital synth as an oscillator source, or really any digital oscillator into an Odyssey, uh, what, what kind of sounds you get out of that. See that two pole lets those nice uh, upper stuff going on uh, through a little bit. Where the four pole, this middle four pole, the 4035, makes you hear it less than the two pole. And the bottom one, the 4075, blocks out almost all of it. So you'd have to raise your frequency point to make up for that. Still don't get that much, not nearly as much as the two pole. down an octave. In this case, this uh, oscillator isn't giving me that much uh, bright stuff, so I'll get a little bit of bright stuff here from the saw wave. Where what I have from the electric drive is a little more vocal, sounding a little vowel-y. We'll get a little bit of bright stuff above that. And again, without the electrode, we get this. Put them both together. Another trick uh, that you can pull off with um, a digital synth as an oscillator is you can make a paraphonic synth out of the Odyssey that does more than the two note um, duo funny that the Odyssey would do on its own. So the Electribe can do four notes at a time and well, we'll play some four note chords out of the Odyssey. I'll just turn the Odyssey down. Well, I'll turn that oscillator of the Odyssey down, which is VCO1 we were hearing. Okay, I'm gonna hit menu and it's set to voice assign mono. Okay, and I'm gonna set that to one of the poly modes. And um, now I can play four note chords. Just uh, pitch that octave back up. 
clipping a little bit. So the, there is no volume control of the, the, oscillate, uh, the audio input uh, specifically on the Odyssey. So we have to do it from our source, which is going to be the volume knob on the Electrod because we're clipping the input some. So now I can play four note chords. Okay, and of course, so we're gonna use the filter of the Odyssey. Let's try a, a different oscillator one besides signs. Let me get a little more eyes in there. Okay. Change that speed a little bit of the modulation and a little less depth. Try the four pole for that. And so, uh, thanks for watching. I plan on doing lots more synthesizer videos. I have a room full of this stuff, and I'm going to try some interesting experiments with it. Well, they're at least interesting to me. Maybe you'll like them too. All right. Catch you later.